Good morning, Hudson Valley. Well, last month we marked the 40th anniversary of the Paris Peace Accords. It was the Paris Peace Accords that brought to an end the Vietnam conflict. Colonel Lee Ellis, retired, was a Vietnam POW, along with such American heroes as Senator John McCain, Admiral Stockdale, and many others. And for five years, Colonel Ellis was uh, a POW. Today, he is a nationally recognized expert and much sought-after speaker on leadership. He talks to uh, public and private organizations and uh, Colonel Ellis, uh, retired Colonel Ellis, is also the author of a new book called Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. Colonel Ellis will be addressing uh, West Point cadets today. I'm extremely honored to welcome uh, retired Colonel Lee Ellis to Good Morning Hudson Valley. Well, good morning, Bruce. It's so good to be with you. And I'm actually uh, up in the Thayer Hotel looking out at the Hudson Valley and the Hudson River, so it's a great privilege to be here. Right in our backyard here, so to speak. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, it is uh, amazing. I, I was looking at uh, some background on your story um, uh, during your time as a POW. It's remarkable to me, and I actually served in, in Vietnam um, back in 1970. It's a long story. I was there for a lot shorter time than most people were. But when you were assigned to Vietnam, your, your tour of duty had an, uh, you know, it was a finite period. You knew when it would be over. But as a prisoner of war, you had no such idea. The, the conditions were often horrendous, and yet um, military protocol and and leadership never broke down. You know that's so true, and that was uh, that was a great thing that we had going for us. We had uh, a good bit of military training. The the POWs in the Hanoi Hilton complex or the Hanoi complex where we were were mostly air crews, so the average age in there going in was you know thirty thirty one. So most guys had been around for seven or eight years at least in the military. Now, I, was, I had just turned 24, so I'd only, I'd only been in two and a half years. But we had that strong bedrock of uh, military leadership and of just maturity that really helped us uh, get through that experience. And in this book, that's what I've tried to capture is the lessons that, uh, that were so obvious there from the leadership and the courage, the character, uh, all of the teamwork, all those kinds of things that enabled us to resist, survive, and return with honor. I'm sure people often wonder, what keeps you going? What what uh, gives you hope in, in a situation like that? Well, I think, first of all, we all have a strong desire to survive. Uh, as fighter pilot mentality, most of us were, uh, you want to win. And winning uh, does not mean giving up. It means uh, staying in the fight until the things shift in your favor, just like George Washington. You know, he stayed in the fight until things shifted in his favor. So that's, I think, what we were trying to do, uh, and really just do our duty, be loyal to our country, be loyal to our team teammates, and uh, resist the enemy and just keep doing that day after day until someday we believed we'd go home. And I think that was a strong belief. We had a strong, positive mentality about it. We had to confront the, the realities of our situation, but our leaders just kept doing that, and they were the ones that always went first into the fire, into the crucible of torture and uh, hard times, but yet they kept bouncing back and setting a good example for us. What was it like uh, 40 years ago when all this ended and, and you, you were uh, able to return home? Well, one of my cellmates and I, we had a, a joke, you know, you have to have humor, and uh, we had this thing going between us, and and he would say, uh, "Is this the day?" And I'd say, "No, Jim, this is not the day." And he, I would say that to him, and he would say, "No, this is not the day." And then one day they kept called us in, and of course read the protocol to the agreements and told us that the war was over and that we would be going home uh, over a period of sixty days in groups based on the U.S. final withdrawal from Vietnam. And then finally, on March the 14th, 1973, they took us, uh, told us to go down to the in room there in one of the buildings and go pick up our going home clothes. And as we picked up uh, civilian clothes to wear walking out of there and a pair of shoes, which we hadn't had in five and a half years, 
uh, Jim looked over at me and said, uh, Leon, which is my real name, uh, this is the day. And uh, when we got on that airplane and we broke ground at C-141 in Hanoi, man, we were screaming and yelling and stomping the floor. And it was almost too hard to believe. And then when we got over international water and they told us that over the intercom, uh, again, the cheering started. It just uh, it was one of those things that we always believed we'd go home. But then when we did, we were so generally so emotionally flat, except for a couple of cheers there, uh, that it was like, okay, we've got to go home and see what this is really going to be like. Because it's been so long. Well, sir, I, I wish we had more time to talk. You will, you will be talking to uh, West Point cadets today, and it mm-hmm. was it was an it was an honor to speak with you, and and I wish you uh, all the very very best. Thank you so much, Bruce, and I hope you have a good day. And it's great to be in this part of the country. Thank you, sir. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. News time seven thirty.